dude, so the over the top. <laughs> dude, <laughs> Blender, man, Blender's a cool program. <laughs> Look at the possibilities you can do with Blender. <laughs> can blend faces, dude. So when you're shooting somebody with a tiny gun, you'd expect a tiny bullet hole, but it's actually the complete other way around. You get a ridiculous, huge head explosion. It's much more realistic that way. So I thought the best way to do that would be to simulate skin flying around, slapping around, eyeballs flying out, skulls cracking, just to be realistic and true to the source material. The effects in this video are pretty simple. It's mostly just muzzle flashes and bullet hits, which aren't very time consuming. And I've had a few days to do these effects. Why not go all out and just do fully 3D simulated bullet hits for every shot? So basically for this shot, how I started was I made the rough shape of a torso in Blender and I manually tracked that onto the shot. Then I took that model and I applied a cloth material to it to get the realistic rippling of the man's shirt. Then what I did to that was I applied a cloth simulation. It just allows the cloth to flap around and do whatever physics wants it to do. Then for the actual bullet hole underneath the shirt, I just modeled a little piece of the chest and then sculpted a hole into that. I applied a flesh texture to it, you know, kind of painted on some blood, gave it a skin texture as well, just for the outer rim, modeled some bones, which are really horrible if you take a closer look, but from far away. So, with all that thrown together, we have a realistic blood splat. Here's the shot with the renders straight from Blender. So we gotta cut out the bullet holes on each render, have them not be 100% jank. We're going for a 13, 14% jank. With all the assets cut out correctly, this is what the shot looks like. However, since one of the bullet hits uh, should have gone under the actor's arm, I had to cut out the arm place it back over top of the asset. Then to top it off, we add blood splats, smoke poofs, and then just general sweeteners to the shot to get it ready for YouTube. Ah! Hey, we've got a very special video that we've just released. It's called Tiny Guns, and it's on the Cordo channel. We just released it, so you should check it out now. It is ridiculous. Every single time I get my hands on a camera and shoot a video, something weird happens. This segment's called Nico's Goose and Gas. No, you guys are setting up way too much. It's supposed to be casual, not like a group Nico told us all <laughs> this Everybody morning that this was like the coolest test. thing he's Nico ever said shown he's, anyone. He's got the silliest bit he's ever to be seen on the Sam and Nico I mean, channel. It's just a classic thing. Here, look over at Sam. Don't move your face. Oh, you see more your face? No, here, okay. All right, now look at the closet. Camera closet. What closet? Oh. oh, did you just pano and separate my eyes? It's a little oh. fucked up. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I can do a much better one. Here, try, try it one more time. I'll be as slow as possible. Just tell me when. It instantly lowers your IQ. Oh, I, I know, I know. It's stable. <laughs> Otherwise, you get the janky line in the middle. Let's uh, take a crack at it. The first thing I did, as always, is motion track the shot. Then I took this random 3D head model that I got off of, I believe, TurboSquid.com. I manually went through and I matched the movement of the model to the movement of the actor's head. Then, on top of that, I broke apart this model into multiple pieces and then applied a soft body simulation so that kind of just snapped apart and all the different pieces of the head flew around and smacked into the hood of the car. For texturing the head, I used this screen grab of, <laughs> I used this screen grab of the footage and then, you know, just extended the skin to have realistic uh, colors for the skin. So here's this. Looks really good. Thanks, man. Is that live render? It is. Blender is really good specifically with cycles, for seeing your rendered work as you uh, do your work. Octane can do that too. Octane can do that too. What do you think of Blender? Blender's cool. Uh, I really dig the fact that it has all these like really nice features built into it. I'm pretty convinced that Autodesk is trying to kill 3DS Max. Yeah, so. right. It's like, yeah. okay, uh, how about we've already had a physically based renderer for years. We already have like proper physics and proper soft body physics. And it's like, well, hold on, you're telling me that like all these features I need are part of the program and not like these janky add ons that are either third party or like poorly supported? If I were to tell you that there's like little to no documentation on 3DS Max's physics system, would you believe me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't find anything out about it. Like, there's nothing explaining what anything does. Give me some dang physics applications that work properly and aren't janky, please. I really wish that Ren would have learned Blender. <laughs> I really wish that 3ds Max had better compositing tools. Like, seriously, it's the year. 
I'm using 3ds Max 2018 and when I kick out a 3d render there still isn't an automatic way to separate shadows and everything from my image like I mean there probably is actually I maybe maybe I'm just getting worked up over nothing if you guys know about something like a, like a handy compositing layer kind of export situation for the 3ds Max where it separates your objects and your shadows and all that stuff automatically comment below slash subscribe <laughs> <laughs> yeah So I was supposed to tell you to go watch Tiny Guns while I was doing that, but it's really difficult to talk and do this at the same time. Go watch Tiny Guns on Corridor right now. I've been working this for a while. Wait, here we go, ready? And pistol tricks, first take, first try. Go watch Tiny Guns on youtube.com slash corridor. No, this is lame one. Alright, here we go, ready? Go watch Tiny Guns. <laughs> Alright, I'm giving you way too much material now. Go check it out. First link in the description below. Okay, what I did next was I found this skull model from tf3dm.com. I painted on some blood, and then I parented that to the face, so now it follows the movement, and you know you can kind of see the uh, see the skull through the flapping skin from disgustingness. After that, I found a model of a brain, and I gave it a weird fleshy material, and I basically told Blender to interpret the material where anything close to the center of the brain would be a bloody texture and anything towards the outward shell of the brain would be a fleshy, slightly transparent texture. That's what makes it look so gross. Then I parented that to the head as well so it follows the correct movement. And then I, at a certain frame, told the brain to start simulating as a soft body so it would fall off the head and squish onto the car hood. Uh, for the car hood, I basically did a rough model of the hood, gave it the same kind of material so that the objects could interact with it realistically and bounce around and have the right collision. Then, because it wasn't gross enough, I found a model of an eyeball online and uh, kind of animated that flipping around, just hand animated. The eye is way bigger than it should be, but it's kind of hard to see without that, so I thought I might accentuate it a bit more. To put all that together, we have something that looks like this, which looks really shitty. We render it out, get a final pass of the head, bring that back into After Effects. Here is the original plate. Here is a clean plate added on top so that, you know, the rest of the head wouldn't show up in the shot because it blew off, obviously. We add in the head explosion. Pretty gruesome. But to top it all off, we throw in as many blood spurts and smoke poofs as After Effects can handle. And there you go. That's how you do a really gruesome disgusting, unnecessary head explosion for your Tiny Guns video. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I need like a tripod for my arms. Yeah, dude. And shift. Dude. Jock Watson. <laughs> oh my god. Carmichael. Carmichael. He's like, don't interrupt me. Here, will you face me? I am. Dude, it's like old man Carmichael here. So you're gonna start looking that way, then when I tell you to, you're gonna look over that way. Okay? Without moving your head. And He's too old for this shit. Begin. And shift. That's your two in the same photo. Here, Sam, you do it. Me and Ren. Shoulder to shoulder. Alright, ready? Ren. And you go, and wait, wait, look back. Go back. No, there you go. Oh, no, we got it, we got it. Oh, we got it. Oh, that's so great. Nico's a little screwed up, but Ren is special. There you go. Oh my god. Yo, I'm gonna post that on Instagram. If you aren't following us on Instagram, at Corridor Digital on Instagram. There's a link in the description below. Check it out, we post cool pictures. Question. Yeah. If you could boil down our Instagram into single sounds for each photo, what would it sound like? <laughs> That's a video for another day. <laughs> <laughs> or for each, for each post, what would it sound like? I know it. I'd be curious to hear what people's sounds of this post. Oh, <laughs> 